Today on Extra Time TV, we have the St. Lucia Kings man, Mark Dial, as he talks about the current CPL, his aspirations of playing for the West Indies, his favorite foods, and more. Coming up next. Hi, I'm Shaka Hislop, and you're here at Extra Time TV. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Extra Time TV. Once again, we're here with Mark Dial. He's always been loyal to our show and supported us. Mark this is a new CPL. Once again, it's a little bit different because now, last year, obviously, you all got to some finals. People remember the Zooks, the performance of the Zooks, but now it's the Kings. Mm -hmm. So what was that? how has that transition been for you? Um, obviously, first of all, uh, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure being here. Nice. Um, first, it was a, a smooth transition. You know, obviously, ownership changed mm -hmm. and you had... Kings 11 Punjab owners taking over St. Lucia franchise. So that's where you got the name changed from St. Lucia Zooks mm -hmm. to St. Lucia Kings. But um, as you saw for the past two years, the performances haven't changed in terms of, you know, the first year I was at St. Lucia Zooks, we reached the finals, you know, unfortunately we weren't able to get over the line. Last year, we pretty much followed suit, you know, um, it was a bit closer, but again, got it at the, at the end of the game. But um, I think what is important, you know, for us as a team, as a unit, and, you know, for the fans out there to see is that the brand of cricket that we are playing, you know, it's not, so we, we proved in 2021 that it wasn't just a fluke in 2020, you know, and um, we are showing everyone that we're here to compete. Yeah. You know, we're not just to be taken lightly as the years gone by. Um, I think that the, the setup in, in the St. Lucia franchise has been really, really professional. Since I've been here, I've, I haven't been here for the, for the years gone by. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, under the, the leadership and management of, you know, Darren Sami, when I came into the team, he was the captain. Now he's transitioned into the coach, mm -hmm. you know. So he brings that level of, uh, of professionalism to the setup, you know. Um, so, and as you can see in the results thus far, that we are really progressing into a, a, a really good team and a team to be taken to take notice by actually. Yep. I mean, we can't not talk about this. Obviously, you are the captain now of this team. That's no accomplishment that you could really shy away from or diminish. You know, what has it been, been like for you becoming the Mark DL who, you know, went from TKR to St. Lucia? And, you know, I'm sure you had the obstacles. You spoke about that in previous interviews to so now be the captain of such a franchise. Well, um, firstly, it's the, it was the captain of the 60, the 60 team, right, the, yeah. the T10 that happened because um, obviously, you know, Faf, our uh, original captain, mm -hmm. he wasn't able to, sorry, he wasn't able to, to participate in the 60 because of other commitments in the 100 ball. Mm -hmm. So obviously I had a conversation with Sami and, you know, he, he told me that um, he would like me to captain the team. He, even, he reached out, you know, a while, a while back to tell me, wrap my head around it and stuff and for me, I saw it as a, as a wonderful opportunity because, you know, like I always tell you, I've always seen myself as a leader on and off the field, you know, and um, I was very uh, grateful for that opportunity. You know, um, we got one win out of three games, but that being said, you know, uh, we were the only team without any of our foreign players for that, for that tournament. Right. So we had a lot of young guys, you know, new guys, and I thought that we handled ourselves pretty well. You know, we won against Jamaica. We... We came really close against Guyana. So for me, it was a great opportunity. It's something that I, I look forward to building on, you know, um, because I relish the opportunity, you know, and, you know, being, getting, a, getting a chance to captain a team in such a high stake tournament, mm -hmm. you know, for me, it gave me a lot of confidence going forward into my cricket. Right. You know, um, speaking to the manager and even the coach, they said that, you know, they thought I handled myself pretty well on the field. So for me, it's just about building <clears throat> from this opportunity onwards. Right. So this is obviously another season, as I said before. Everybody wants to win the CPL after being close those last two times. You know, how bad does it feel, you know, after coming so close? You know, is there any anxiety or whatever heading into this um, one thinking that, oh, we won't, you know, I want to win it this time? I wouldn't say anxiety. Obviously, the, the, the feeling is there, you know, the, the passion, the... The, the the want and the desire to actually get over the line this year is there, mm. you know, but um, for us it's about taking it one game at a time. For us it's just about, you know, sticking to our plans, you know, planning properly in team meetings and trying to execute those plans as best as we can. Right. You know, um, 
we have a, a new bunch of guys this year just a, f a couple of us who retained or brought back from last year so you know um, we, we, we're still working on building that team chemistry you know it's halfway into the tournament right now we have two wins out of six you know a um, couple games could have gone either way mm -hmm. so we're still in it you know we just need I think three out of four wins to, to qualify four out of four would be even better so for for me I just feel like uh, we're getting there as a as a as a unit it's just about staying calm and you know winning the important moments in the in, in key the key moments in important games mm -hmm. that we're getting over the line so i wouldn't say that there's anxiety but it's you know it's, it's the desire is still burning the yeah. flame is still high mm -hmm. so you know uh repeat get ourselves back into that finals from two years past and you know at, le at least get over the line this year yep because I could imagine that would be something that would always be on your mind. Yeah, definitely because you know, you know you're that feeling. Don't don't you don't ever lose that yep. feeling, you know. Yep. So because I mean, if you ask me, I can go I can go back through ball by ball from the last last two finals, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the, the 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 feeling is there, the desire is there, and the passion is definitely there to win this day. Right, and you know, I mean, this sounds like a very cliche question, but you know. Obviously, you've been doing well consistently for a while now. It's not like you had a one mm -hmm. season and then you disappeared. It happens in sports. You know, what would you attribute to you having that consistent? Well, not just with the plane, but you know, also taking on the responsibility. Obviously, uh, hard work. Mm -hmm. there, there's, no, um, there's no other way to put it when they say hard work, you know, beats talent when talent fails. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is, it's cliche, but it's actually true, you know. And I've been putting a lot of work, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of work, you know, a lot of sacrifices. I've gone into the past few months, you know, um, down at the KRC, uh, uh, the Rampart Academy, right, yeah. you know, with um, Vasu, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I must, you know, I must make mention, every interview I do, I must make mention of it because, you know, the, he's always there anytime you call on him, mm -hmm. you know, even up to today I spoke to him, mm -hmm. I told him, you know, um, we're here, I want to come and get hit in, and I've been doing a lot of work there, mm -hmm. you know, and for me, that is where the 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 groundwork starts in terms of the more tournaments you play mm -hmm. it's more work you need to put in right you know because the level of these tournaments keep getting higher and higher mm -hmm. and you need to be ready you need to have your 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 level of professionalism at a certain height mm -hmm. so for me it's 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 a good up it's a good challenge i see it as you know trying to better myself better my game each day yep i know for example the cpl i would say is a, a lot stronger now um, because you know there's a lot of investment like obviously with the kings mm -hmm. i mean before everybody knew about the knight riders and so on but then you know barbados has you know now that the royals um with the league being stronger and getting more investment now um do you think that it makes the product the overall product great and also more challenging for you all definitely you know uh, you can see it from the results itself you know um <clears throat> in the years gone by it was pretty dominant by you know uh, let's say uh, uh trinidad guyana mm -hmm. uh, trinidad jamaica you know, um, you have the one-off where one team will probably do have a, a dream run. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this year you see all the teams are distributed evenly. Even last year, you saw um, St. Kitts Patriots reaching the finals and winning. Yeah. You know, um, I think it was the first time that a team apart from Guyana mm -hmm. or TKR was in the finals, you know. So <clears throat> it, that in itself shows that apart from the, the sponsorships and the new owners and stuff, the level of CPL is rising yearly, mm -hmm. you know, and that's very good to see because it's it, it's only going to mean that West Indies cricket is going to improve as well. Right. And, you know, I can't believe I didn't touch on this, but the pre-tournament before this tournament, you know, that was a different twist. Yeah. Did, did that help you all in your preparation? Heading into this? Um, I would say it helped a bit in terms of, you know, getting to know our players, mm -hmm. you know, getting to know the combination, getting the combinations right. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, we weren't uh, fortunate enough to have our foreign players with us, but you know the younger players took the opportunities that were handed to them, and I think they handled themselves really, really well. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me um, and for us as a team, it was just to use that tournament as a stepping stone into heading into CPL, so that we'll know where we at mm -hmm. or where we want to be when CPL starts. Right. So you know, we always have a light-hearted aspect of the thing. You know, you last year we had questions or whatever, but we don't have people asking the same questions again. You know, like. Obviously, you're growing as a person, a player, personal life, all these things like that. <laughs> Last time, I think, um, you know, we had people asking questions about your favorite snacks. What was it again? Um, it was some sort of snack. Uh, 
I think they asked what was the favorite food. Jelly right? beans. Jelly beans. Right, right. Yeah, so is that still a thing? You still like jelly beans? That's crazy for me. I moved from liking jelly beans to loving jelly beans right. now. Now, because I'm Mark, I decided to dabble in the jelly beans. <laughs> and now that's one of my guilty pleasures. I have to visit my dentist now. So, thanks, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. So, you know, like in terms of, you know, every year, I will ask this because it's, you know, people change. So, obviously, like musical taste. Heading into the CPL, the CPL is a party, you know. Yeah. Yes, it's a you know a tournament, you know. So, what's your what's your track list these days? So, funny story is that you know I've always loved dancehall music. Right. I've always, like I said last year, mm. but um, of the past few months, I've been listening to a lot of Indian songs, yeah. which is very very unlike Mark Dial. Mm. But you know, um, I've found myself listening to a lot of Indian film songs. Oh, nice. So it, I, have, I find it helps keep me calm, mm -hmm. you know. So I'd have to say that's the only thing I can add on from last year. Right, right. But it's still, the, you know, dancehall music and then in the odd in between you have you know, Indian music to just keep you calm and relaxed. Right, right. Nobody influenced, you know. Uh, you uh, know. Yeah, they were influenced in the Indian music. I have a feeling that was coming in. So <laughs> his face immediately kind of lit up. Yes, when yes, yes. Like, Obviously because you know me, I, I wouldn't just yeah. decide to... Um, decide to do that on my own right right but the influence was there was there sorry yeah so um so my intuitiveness yeah <laughs> there was something there because i saw your face immediately lit up i was like okay somebody whoever that person is we're not gonna pry we're not that kind of station <laughs> when we turn up the cameras then we'll ask that question uh-huh so you know obviously we always gonna ask the the fun questions but in the serious questions you are You've been doing well in the CPL and the T20 format now, you know, aspirations for going like outside, like, you know, like playing for West Indies and things yeah. like that, you know, is that? Definitely, that's n number one goal. First and foremost, at the front, back, middle, center, all round of my mind. All right. You know, um, I was having this conversation with our manager mm -hmm. just a couple of days ago and I was telling him, you know, playing for West Indies is a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. It's a dream of mine. You know, I, I have that in high esteem, mm -hmm. you know, because as a young kid, you're growing up, you want to play for West Indies, you know? no matter how how hard it might seem, how far the dream might seem away, but you always believe, and you know, um, I'm fortunate to, enough to be in the CPL, be in, in the leagues around the world, you know, in front of the eyes of a lot of people. So for me, that dream is never dying. Mm -hmm. It's never dead, sorry. Yeah. Um, as long as I'm playing cricket, as long as I'm on that field, it will always be a desire of mine. Right. You know, um, speaking on, on the leagues, and unfortunately, after this, CPL, I have a couple of leagues mm -hmm. to, to um, there's a T10 in, in Dubai, then right. I've been selected for the Uni the e International T20 League in UAE, mm -hmm. you know, for Sharjah Warriors. Right. So for me, um, it's about just relishing these opportunities that, are, that come my way mm -hmm. and obviously trying to have an impact in whichever team that I play for. Right. So that, again, that way goes back to the joint balls and the training and the hours that you put in, mm -hmm. you know, it's for these moments, these, these, these tournaments. So I'm hoping to, you know, catch the eyes of more right. or even a wider audience yes. after this tournament. Yeah. Hopefully you actually have folks. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just to end things off. So for those of you who don't know, I mean, I'm just going to give people the benefit of the doubt. You and Nicholas Poran are cousins. Yep. If you don't know that, folks, now you know. Which <laughs> I'll be shocked if you didn't know. So, you know, obviously we, we kind of touched on this before, but we're going to end this off. Obviously, he's with the Knight Riders. You all grew up together. You know, what's the conversations like with you all during tournaments? You know, is it like cousins harassing each other? Hey, I'm going to beat you. Mm, no, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's not so much so. It's just, you know, it's good fun. Right. Um, you know, both our families are um, very happy for us. Right. You know, and, and even each other, we're very happy for each other's success, as I said last year. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we keep in constant communication, but it's always about how to better each other. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I may see something that, I notice about him that I feel I could be beneficial to helping him. I'll hit him a message. Right. And you know, likewise, you know, if you see if I'm playing in a game out a certain way that you feel that, you know, mm -hmm. could improve on and those kinds of things. So the right. conversations always are um, about, you know, better bettering each other. Mm -hmm. If it's not cricket, it's cards. Right. <laughs> yes. So it's either pull a line for uh, all fours mm -hmm. or speak about cricket. Well, you he, folks, he did mention when we asked him if he liked video games, that cards, mm -hmm. you would rather play cards than anything else. So that's still Any the same. Any day, any I mean, I've seen his social media where he goes nuts playing cards, folks. <laughs> so I could tell. I could tell. So, you know, we know you have a very hectic schedule. We know how it is in the CPL. Thanks for taking time to, you know, come and have a chat with us no as problem. always. And, you know, 
The cameraman has a question. What is the question? Always, right? Yes, yes. Um, Unorthodox folk, that's how we do it. Yeah. I don't think we've ever asked you, um, but what were your thoughts on playing the T10 format? Um, T10 format is very fast paced. It's fun, you know, but it's fast paced. You have to be thinking on your feet. And for me, um, going back to the 60, you know, um, thankfully I've had a couple of years in Dubai, the UAE T20 League, T10 League, sorry. So, you know, I had a, a bit of experience coming into this tournament. Um, being a captain, though, it's a bit different in terms of your brain is clicking every second you're out there because the game is so fast that, you know, you're, you're trying to stay in the moment, but you also have to think ahead if it makes any sense, you know, if that makes sense. And for me, it was fun. You know, it was good. It was good fun because T10 is, is basically for purely for entertainment and enjoyment. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I definitely think that the 60 is something that can catch on. <clears throat> it can grow, you know, because T10 is becoming so, uh, it's growing so fast worldwide. Mm. So I enjoy it, to be honest with you. You know, bowlers are always under the pump because you have small boundaries, good batting wickets. But again, it, cha it challenges your skill set. So for me, I enjoy it and I'm looking forward to playing a lot more. Oh, nice. Preference. Oh, of all the forms, which is your preference? Uh, I I prefer T20, you know, um, and I'll tell you why. It's because, you know, I just feel as though the past few years I've been playing a lot of T20 leagues, but also my my skill set and my style of play is suited for T20. Right. 50 over cricket as well, but my I I, I would love, you know, I'm, everyone would love to play test cricket, formats and longer version. I have no problem with it. But if you ask me my favorite, I'll have to say T20. All right, Mark, so once again, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here continuously supporting us yeah. from the beginning, folks. He's always been there. And good luck in the upcoming CPL. We know how hectic it is. And we really appreciate you taking time out to have a little chat with us, as always. Thank you so very good much. good luck. Take care. Nice. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.